So Uber has been ordered to pay $1.1 million because some of the drivers on their platform denied rides to a woman who had a guide dog. Hey, this is John from Ride Upstate, and I want to talk about this story a little bit today because I think it hits on a couple of different issues. Now, these denials happened, I think it was in 2016 and 2018, and so this happened quite a while ago, but the important thing is here, I, this was kind of when that whole deal with people were buying vests and stuff for their do- for their pets, and they weren't actually working dogs, um, and so rightly so, there were a lot of drivers who just wouldn't take a ride if they noticed that someone had uh, a dog with them because they didn't want to have a dog misbehaving in their vehicle. Now, I've given rides to people who have guide dogs, and I don't have a problem with it. Uh, Those dogs are well-behaved. They are trained to lay on the floor and not get up on the seats so they don't damage the seats. And typically, people who own working dogs like that, they know how to handle them. You know, we're not talking about a chihuahua in someone's purse or something like that. You are not required to transport someone's pet. However, if someone has a dog that's assisting them because of a disability, you are required to transport them. There are some questions that you can ask a person. I'm not going to go into those here. I'll leave a link in the description to the Americans with Disabilities Act that talks about this, the questions that you're allowed to ask. And based on those questions you can determine whether or not this is actually a working dog. Now, I happen to know people who train guide dogs, and they are just upset about how this whole vest thing and everything has made things very difficult for people who have actual disabilities and actually need assistance. Uber claimed that because it was the individual drivers who did it that they weren't responsible because they have training on their platform, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Well, the judge didn't see it that way. So here's what I'm going to do for you. I'm going to give you a few recommendations on what you can do to make sure that you're prepared for when you go pick up someone who has a guide dog. Number one is have a picnic blanket or something in the vehicle that you can put down so that the dog can... Uh, sit on it and rest on it. Number two, ask the person who's getting into the vehicle if they need any assistance, if you need to move a seat up or something like that for them to give them more space. Number three, keep a lint roller handy. If you have a lint roller handy and you have cloth seats, you can quickly get the hair off the seats after you've transported the person and their guide dog. And number four, this is really important. Don't treat the dog as a pet. Don't ask to pet it. Don't try to distract it. Don't do anything like that. It is a working dog, and you may excite it, and that may cause some problems. So I hope this helps you out. If you have any comments about this, about transporting this, do you have any stories about dealing with guide dogs? I'd love to hear it uh, from you. My name is John from Ride Upstate, reminding you that just because you're in a small market, It doesn't mean you need to settle for small profits.